Get in set. Cars going down. So Dario leads this one away from Tony. Jules in third position. Already kind of following Linus turn. Clean for an opening lap. Dario in or looking like he had the pace to take every single round of qualifying yesterday. Uh, he had a bit of an incident in the first round. And Tony Gruber takes the win. But other than that, Dario looking quite peerless over a five minute run. He's just going to look to settle into the run. Dario famously unlucky in these 45 minute finals where he's come up to the one minute mark. Uh, and everybody is still pretty much in the possession position that they left the grid in uh, Elvin Dickman got the jump on Spinello so but other than that they are running exactly as they started yeah only only, uh, uh, only guy almost inside fallen down. yep down to sixth position. And look, uh, Tony Gruber looks like he's a, a little bit tighter coming out onto the main straight. Uh, the, the Dario you wouldn't really want to have an accident Ooh. there if you can avoid it. But uh, if we have a look out of here, Ooh. and there we go. So Tony Gruber gets himself Ooh, in front wow. as Dario. This is if this happens if this goes on for forty five minutes we are in for a barnstormer. Absolutely. Uh, so Tony Gruber looks like he's he's a little quicker coming out onto the main straight, arguably off the end of it. But the Mario Valetri uh, a little bit better here through this infield section. But uh, here we go. That slightly tighter line from Tony Gruber. Ooh. He's sort of taking a little slider in Tony. A little bit. It was, yeah, a little bit, a little bit sideways from him. I wonder, trying. I wonder if Dario is playing a game where he uh, he, he lets his tires wear to, um, you know what I mean? So the so, so his rollout is is perfect uh, with the tire wear. Um, we've seen that happen quite a bit in the in the quarters and the semis, where the cars just seem a lot faster for certain drivers um, after the tires wear down. Yeah, you will end up in a in a point, but uh, good point, Frank. That we might get to uh, a situation as well where um, this is going to be the the first final of the weekend where we're going to see tire change, um, or the first couple today where we're going to see tire part way through it and having a tactic on when how many tires, uh, whether it's only outside tires. Um, so we've got to change for the lead now. Tony Gruber yeah. back from a little bit oh. sideways. Back in front of him again. Who's being fair? Why? What? All of this fold in front of him. Uh, he is what the skills is only eight tenths off of the back. Of it. Yeah, he's, um, still he's waiting to uh, to pick up any pieces. Yeah, he's uh, waiting to um, to pick that one. Up. Mario still in front. And Gruber We've pits first. Tony in the pit. No, Tony Clean pit. pit. He's he's back out very quick. Uh, in fourth place behind uh, Guyamo. So, so let's see where Dario comes out. Yeah. Dario's actually quick stop there, so it pulls out a bit more of a lead. And I don't think Dario had lost the lead then, because I think Bill's pitted at the same time. Guyamo uh, going as running in second, though he hasn't stopped yet. And, oh, small mistake there, coming out of the main straight from Dario. A little bit of a run onto the curb. Got away with it. 
So Gruber has been what freed. Be Guyalmo has gone into the pits. So Guyalmo got to just about the five minute mark before he could stop. Everybody else was sort of around the 420, 430 by the looks of it. Certainly guys out at the front of that. Still running with our leader at the moment, Harry Overlandry. Tony Gruber is one car back from him. Yeah, let's see if we can get both these, uh, the lead two cars in, in the same shot as they're coming into the infield. Slightly sideways for Dario there. Starting to come up on one of the first back markers. Yeah, they'll get out of the way. Uh, the car, car seven of spinny yellow. Yep. Dario got a little bit of a gap now. He's got it up to. In fact, that drives right in again. That's a little small mistake. Just a half spin. Even spin yellow is lapping really good pace. But about to go a lap down. Hanging on pretty well. There we go. Get the way of one. Second car. Exactly what you want. It's always a bit of a fear as the driver that's like one competitor, or you know, one of the guys you're racing, get through uh, through a traffic, and the the car that's being lapped doesn't realise there's another one close and following. They are through the way. Just under half a second. Oh, Balestre gets, uh, gets sideways. Gruber. Let's Gruber get right up on him again as he was coming onto the straight. So it was, yeah, there was uh, less than half a second between them, but Tony Gruber's right back with him, got that tighter entry back out onto the straight again. And, whoa, Tony nearly had his nose cut off there by Dario. See who's quicker where it looks like Tony Gruber is possibly a little bit faster if he can find his way through. Having said that, he's done that before. There we go, he's got his way through on the main straight. Let's see what Dario Balestri can do. Dario now trying to find his way back through and makes and it. Gruber so, uh, Tony, Tony Gruber pits. Remember, Dario pulled out a little bit of a gap in the pits last time. Would expect him to come in. Uh, it was one lap afterwards last yep. time. Just one lap afterwards this time. He's in the pits. He's released. Let's just see where he goes. I think Jules also was in the pits as well. Waiting for this one to play out. Not worked out that well for Tony Gruber. No, looking he's, at he's, things. he's dropped down several spots. Did he? Did he flame out or something? Oh, he's just bumped I, into the back of Taroni coming uh, across the finish line. So lost Taroni lots of time, but lost uh, Gruber a bunch of time as well. So Gill's up into second position now. Guyamo in to third position. Carmine Raiola in fourth place. The Super Bowl winner, Tony Gruber, dropped into its position. Minute mark. Running with 
Valestri, our leader, lead over Jules Grosjean, is currently uh, about 1.6 seconds. Jules flash through the back got there. No between them at the moment, but, but Dario closing in on some traffic itself. That's uh, Thurston, and I think I can't make up the, the other car. Uh, of it, it's Melvin it's Deakman. A, yep, Melvin and uh, Thurston. Having a back. There we go. We are having to go around the outside. That's not necessarily a place that you like to have to go when you're passing people, but uh, we trust Melvin Deakman. Meanwhile, Gruber is uh, coming up on the back side of Alessio Maceo, his teammate. But still quite a ways down from Balestre. Yeah, they're about to step back, both two. Three. So, Ms. Ms. Ayo is like Gruber through. Good teamwork going on there. And, uh, in these longer finals as well, which sometimes worth kicking your back balls. Uh, maybe get your elbows down a couple of minutes to go, but uh, someone's clearly that much faster than you. A one and a half behind Dario Balestri. So Gruber has come up on Taroni once again. Taroni lets him pass. So that's good to see. And Gruber's coming up on the number five car of Raiola, who has just gone to the pit. So it gives him a little bit more clear space. And Gruber is pitting. So it's about uh, it's uh, it's about four minutes twenty seconds uh, since uh, Gruber's last pit. So if uh, Balestri is able to eke out just a bit more than Gruber each time. could be the, the long-term strategy. Dario Balestri still leading this one. In front from Jill Grosskamp. Tony Gruber's got his way back up into third position now. Still running with our lead car of Mario Balestri. Lead gap now just under three seconds. Tony Gruber got himself back up into third position. He's about seven seconds down on. Tony back lapping at the same pace as Barrio Gillespie when uh, he came out of the pits behind. He was some ten seconds back, still ten seconds back. As we come towards the fifteen-minute mark.
Right, the chariot left out in front of the field. Field frog camp running in six currently from his P3 on the grid. Tony Gruber dropped down the field earlier on for the second round pit stops. Uh, starting to way, make way back. Got the gap skills down to just over six seconds. It's edging up towards him. That could be a good battle going on later on. Dario looking pretty comfortable at the moment. We haven't got to a stage yet where they're going to start thinking about high stops, so I would imagine everybody's going to. Gruber now actually looking a little bit faster than Dario. He's, he's got the gap down to nine seconds. He's made his way back up through the field. Gruber's just past the uh, uh, last chance qualifier winner, uh, Taroni and Maceo. And yeah, he's, he's got a nice clear track in front of him. And Dario's pitting. Dario Balestri pits, gets released. Nice exit from the pit lane there. He's doing a bit over four Good minutes way. per per per, uh, per stint at the moment. Yeah. Um, Kind of what we'd expect. Some of them are able to edge up towards the five-minute mark. But I think he, he may have come in a little early because he's now in completely free track. Well, at least for a lap yep. or so. Uh, he's just passed the. I mean, that's uh, part of the skill of a. Uh, that's part of the skill of a pit man of uh, identifying a, a nice gap and sort of working on on pit windows. Hoping. That Get you through, get you in, and get you out on to clear track. Tony Gruber is scything his way into uh, Gilles Groskamp's second position. Tony Gruber is now. Let's wait and see as it updates. Should we? Should we drop down to uh, to see that battle? Uh, well, it's still four seconds at the moment, but um, it's closing up. So, yeah, let's go and see if we can find the okay. two Okay, Zach coming towards Gruber. you, the bright orange car. Uh, he's going into the kink now, and he's about to go into the sweeper, the last of the bright orange cars. He's our third place man, and he's slowly reeling in Yelis Grosskamp, who's mired in with back markers at the moment. There's three cars in between them. It's the uh, the four of Raiola, I believe, uh, the seven and the six of Maceo. He's getting a bit sideways, giving up a lot of time to, to Gruber. And let's him pass. Yep, and uh, it wasn't that long ago that those two were battling for position, uh, Raiola and Wade. Well, it, it wasn't a huge battle, but uh, they were together on track for position. The seven car of Spin so Yellow is next for Gruber. Yep. Actually, he's already passed them. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Gaiamo, sorry, not Raiola. Uh, Gaiamo is the next car in line, that yellow car, just plain yellow, not bright yellow. But Yep, made it navigated him quite safely. Stefanizzi in the nine is that uh, teal green color next. There's like and two and a half fast. seconds. Yeah, it's him. coming down. Of course, the, the referee is doing a pretty good job calling traffic, even for Gruber, uh, as well as Dario. Yep. 
think Gills is going to have the the Jaws music playing in his head. He'll be uh, he'll be seeing Tony Groover closing on him and catching up towards him in front of Scotland. So no cars in between Gruber and uh, Grosskamp now. Grosskamp is about to pass um, Guillermo once again. So Dario Balestri looking pretty comfortable out from the gap. He's staying around eight seconds. Uh, but of course, Tony Groover's had to catch and pass a lot of traffic. Um, and Dario hitting Tony Groover. Why? See how I set things up. I think that might have been someone uh, just waving out on the back straight. And Dario is pitting. So they're pretty much in sync. They are, and uh, Tony Gruber is going in second position. Fills has he to drop down into fourth position. The so Gills had a problem in pit stops. In fact, Gruber is going now at lifting. But has Palestri had an issue in the pit? Uh, I'm not, his, his mechanic is not in a freak out mode or anything like that, so I'm not sure what's happened. Dari's just crossing, so he's out on track. Okay, uh, we yeah. have got. Uh, we're still showing with uh, Tony Gruber as leading this one. Yeah, maybe, maybe they did a tire change. Two, two tires, maybe? Could be. Could be. But uh, Dario has had a lower pit stop. Yeah, we're about that distance, aren't we? We're about that distance into the run. Yeah, I was, I was just about uh, to ask yeah. when, when the tires are going to, tire changes are going to happen, but uh, we may have literally blinked and missed it. It, it. These things happen so quick. I think they're allowed, uh, obviously, two mechanics. So you have, um, you're allowed two mechanics in the pit per car. So uh, drivers... Uh, one one man working on the front tires and the other working on the rears. I think what um, uh, possibly um, I, I think what caught me out was Dario didn't appear to have been stopped long enough, but quite possibly he's only changed the uh, the outsides. Possibly he he may have flamed out in the pits as well. He he does seem to be a bit slidey. He's trying to get past uh, the number five of uh, Raiola, a, a teammate, actually. So it should be a fairly easy job. But uh, they both passed Taroni. They have. You know what I would love to see as a, as a, as a commentator or a spectator is if... Uh, Maybe the first set of tires um, use a black wheel and the second set of tires use uh, a white wheel or something like that. So it's very clear who's doing what. But uh, Gruber all over the back of, I th is that Yillis? No, it's not Yillis, sorry. Oh, my bad. Sideways yeah, moment there is, for is, Tony Gruber. Is camp. Yeah, he is, he is all, he is, um, Hunting down Yillis still, so it's but to lap him, it seems. I, I think uh, Yillis has had his tyre change, so I think yeah. what we're seeing is Tony Groover hasn't yet so, done a tyre stop. Yeah, so maybe Tony is the one gambling here. I mean, we're over half distance now in the final. The thing is, any if you. You, you you might as well aim to stop around halfway through because yeah. and, and do your, your time change because otherwise you're running for a chunk of the race on a, a non-optimal tire strap. Yeah. Um, you, he's coming into the pits between... now, so it's he's coming into the pits now, so we'll see what happens. 
So uh, here we go. Like, we'll yeah, there they go. There's the tire change. So we might see yeah. everything come together now. So this and is an outside tire change. Did you have any other side of oh, the car done? All four. All four. Yeah, it is. All four. So you're watching it happen here on RC Racing TV and Efra back out in front of Francesco Taroni. Dario Balestri back in front then. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, a few minutes to wait and see what sort of uh, how the pace works out with uh, if they're changed only. Oh, Dario's in the pits. Just getting fuel. Yes, he's back out. Yeah, so th this is the order now, pretty much as it was before uh, that round of pits started and Tony Gruber made his way to the front. I think what caught me out was Dario Galastri's stop was incredibly fast. So it could come down to the last five minutes with uh, Tony having um, really, really good uh, tire diameter. Um, and meaning excellent speed over Yilis and um, and Balestri. I think they'll all have calculated it to be on very similar yeah. tire diameters at the end. Um, it's the outside tires that take the big hit here. Uh, you can see you've got that fast sweeping entry onto the straight yeah. and off the straight. So the front right hand tire is going to be begging for mercy. Dario did give away a, a, a little bit of his secrets. Um, he told us the, his optimum tire diameters um, yesterday during the Super Bowl. So uh, he's running almost nose to tail with uh, Grosskamp. Grosskamp about a half a second behind him. Yep, and they're about four seconds down the road. So actually, that's the battle for the lead going on. Yeah, so should we... Let's go to the uh, the start of the... So at the end of the track, uh, end of the lap is uh, Balestri. He's coming towards you now, Zach. It's Balestri at that uh, unique gray back end. He says he likes the gray color now. I didn't mention anything to him about age or anything, but... Uh, <laughs> I had plenty of grey uh, going on myself, but it's Dario Balestri in the lead. Is uh, it's actually increased a little bit from uh, from Gross Camp. Uh, I I think the reason they were so close together was um, Balestri was one stop ahead of Gross Camp. So uh, they ended up artificially close but still running with the leader at the moment. Still only about a second in it. Yeah, and Gruber's uh, maybe two, three seconds behind Grosskamp. He is, yes. So He's just, four uh, seconds off the lead. You know, one, one, one or two half spins or drifts or... A slight entanglement with the back marker, and, and Gruber's right up there again. We saw how aggressive he drives. I can't remember seeing him drive before, but he reminds me a lot of uh, Dave June, um, former national champion in the U.S. He was one of the most aggressive touring car racers I've ever seen, and Gruber is very much in that mold. So it looks like Gruber's just nicked second off of Grosskamp. Yep. I, I was just going to say that uh, uh, Grosskamp came in for a uh, pit stop. Blink and you miss it. Absolutely. This will all draw itself together. We're coming up to two-thirds distance. Uh, last five minutes or so, this will all come together as everybody exits the pits for the last time. But great fight back from uh, Tony, well, in fact, Tony Gruber's now pitted and dropped uh, and got Jill um, up in front of him. So expecting to see Dario pit fairly shortly. 
But at the moment, it's uh, about an eight second lead for Dario. There he goes. And it looks like he's going to come out in more clear space. Uh, well, he's got some, forward, some lap traffic ahead of him, but he's going to have clear space for a few laps. At this stage, lap traffic, it's not too much of a problem as long as you're approaching them one by one. What you don't want to be doing as the leader, even though they're compelled to get out of your way, be approaching and catching up on cars that are fighting each other for position. Um, that's always the, the really risky time when you, you have the, the danger that you're going um, you're gonna to get caught up in a, a bit of an accident between them. So he'll be relatively relieved to see the cars running in front of him, kind of line astern, even though there's a, a few of them. They're not all bundled together in one gaggle. They can uh, yeah. go at them one by one and pick them off. He does have Yillis about a second behind him and then about a second and a half again to Gruber. Yeah, I think Tony Gruber is actually the, the danger man for him. Um, he seems to have... Gilles, um, he's got the, the pace in his pocket, I think, to uh, to, to deal with, with Gilles. Um, it's it's Tony Gruber who looks like he's given clear track, uh, might actually have the, the pace to, to do damage to Dario. Dario doesn't seem to be making massive amounts of headway through this lap traffic, so maybe he's kind of just holding fire a bit, but I don't see why he would do that. Potentially, he's waiting to see if they'll... Yeah, he's not charging up to the back of them. Yeah. He's been there. One of them pits out of the way in front of him. Yeah. Um, he's got that couple of... He's got that little bit of a buffer in front of him, so he, I think he's playing a, a sensible game. Um, he, he's not feeling the need to jump straight past them at every opportunity and dive into tiny little gaps. Um, he, he's just, yeah, letting them naturally come out of his way as he picks or as they pit in front of him. Uh, and it, it's opening up the, the track a little bit. Of course, you can see some of the lap traffic as well that's in and around them. I think that's Alex Thurston behind him. It is, um, yes. As someone who's been lapped many, many times through my racing career, um, it, it's always good to, you know, you, you can use that as well when you've, you've been lapped um, to the latch on somewhere near the, the back of the, the leader. Obviously, you don't want to be taking them off. That's the very worst thing you can do. But they can help drag you along and open up some gaps in traffic for you as well. Still uh, just about a second, though Dario now has clear track in front of him. All of that traffic that he's passed, um, I was going to say Jill's had to pass it, but he looks to have pitted. He did. So Tony he did. Gruber is now into... Tony has just pitted. Second. Tony's just pitted. Uh, still about four minutes between each pit. 4.15 to 4.30. So, lovely bit of open track in front of uh, Dario. It's going to be a long time, several minutes, uh, probably even a complete another pit stop before Dario comes across any more lap traffic. It does, though. It looks like he, he just got um, himself uh, caught out a little bit down last lap on this uh, short shoot here. Um, I, I think he actually got a better exit from the the, cor the previous corner and ha had an upshift where he wasn't quite oh, expecting it. It fit for Dario Balestri. Pit man making well sure, get the car right out of the pit lane. The last time he pitted was 14.30, so, uh, and it's 10.30 when he uh, just did that pit. So that's a three minute gap. I think that's just, um, playing with a gap he's got to have a splash and dash at some point yeah. um so if there's a window to drop into um you're effectively you're dividing 10 by four um it, it wasn't going to work he was going to need to drop in somewhere so he'd have a, an earlier stop or a later stop 
somewhere in that that range. Uh, that was Hitman calling in. So we're coming into the range now where you're going to have um, maybe one more stop after this one. Um, so if you get to, yeah, I think after this lap they can probably get by on one more stop. Yeah, we've got uh, Gruber uh, is chasing down Grosskamp. So again, they're about a second apart. So. Uh, Grosskamp is about a second behind Balestri, and Gruber's less than a second behind uh, Grosskamp. So if we drop back one car, Zach, Grosskamp gets a little wild and lets uh, Gruber catch up to him. So we got uh, Grosskamp being uh, about to get harassed by the uh, by Gruber in that bright orange, and they both just pitted just a just a couple minutes ago. So that flash of orange behind behind Yillis, that is Tony Gruber. Yillis, who they is are our... running quite close to Dario Balestri as well. Yeah. But I believe Balestri has got one more stop to do, and Grosskamp and Gruber have got two more to do. Wow, they're really close to to Balestri now. Yeah, I I think that's a little bit false. I I think uh, balestri has got an extra stop in his pocket. But uh, yeah, top three um, with eight minutes to go. They're all together on the track. But uh, I think Wallace well, Free has probably got um, a couple of seconds in his pocket. Oh, that is yeah, Jules Gillis is who's pit. gone to pit. Yeah. Oh, Wallace well, flamed out. Wallace well, flamed out at the start of the straight. Okay, so uh, Dario Balestri then has uh, that. And not Gruber is coming to pit. His mechanics still get, okay. He's back out, but where is this going to put him? And Gruber. All right, Gruber and Grosskamp up at the front. The left down third, fourth. Carmine Raiola up there. Okay, Tony Gruber. about to go into the kink, Zach. The bright orange car and the white and orange car behind him. These are our leaders. So lead two right together now. And Raiola is actually course, past the left as well. there on the same fuel strategy uh, as well. So Dario the last, no luck at all. That's no. really unfortunate for him. Always seems to have um, issues in these uh, big meetings. Certainly the tenth nitro meetings. Always right up at the front of it. Yeah, this lead you. battle that we're watching: Tony Groover and Jules Grosskamp. Together as they cross the line, there's a quarter of a second between them. And as we saw in the uh, the highlights reel that we showed uh, before the race started, uh, Balestri actually hasn't won in this category, at least in the last uh, 10 or a dozen years. He hasn't, no. He won the uh, eight. Uh, he's won the eight Euros, but not so the... So Balestri's in the not... pits. His mechanic is picking away at something on the bottom of his car. Can't quite tell, so I think that's Balestri's race done. Unfortunate. If he's picking away at something at the bottom of the car, he's probably trying to flip free off the flywheel, uh, which suggests that it's um, maybe the, the engine stuck um, towards the top of its stroke. So, uh, yeah. yeah it it that. flamed out as he was going out. So, yeah, he's, he's several laps yeah, down now. It, it, it seats at the top of its, its stroke, so uh, engine may be overheated slightly. 
into the final five minutes. This final seems to have gone pretty quickly. Tony Gruber leading from Jill Cross Camp. Gap now nine tenths of a second. Gruber edging away. This is what we felt. We felt that uh, Dario Balestri and Tony Gruber had that little bit of extra pace. Dario Balestri dropped all the way down to ninth position now after his prevails uh, in the pits. We're running with the leader, Tony Gruber. Uh, dropped down the field himself early on, dropped down to sixth place, but uh, great display of pace. And has managed to pull himself back into contention. More than contention, he is... Right up at the front, his lead now uh, about one second. Gillis has just four uh, pitted. Out. Yep. So th this is going to be the last round of stops for them. When they and come in. Gruber's coming in. Gruber's coming in. This will be his final stop. He gets away. A little bit of air there as he exited the pit lane. And Gillis he transitioned has... into that little drop. Gillis has two cars between him and Gruber to navigate. It's the eight and the five of Diekman and Raiola. I don't think uh, Gilles has got the, the pace, unfortunately, for, for him. I think uh, Tony Gruber has got more outright pace in the car, um, and it, it has looked like that um, pretty much all the way through the final. He was catching, he was closing on Gilles. Um, so, barring any issues now uh, I, I think now that the pit stops have all shaken themselves out the gap is like as they cross the line it uh, like about three seconds two and a half seconds something like that so Tony Gruber looking pretty comfortable good drive from him uh, kept his head when the field uh, sort of swallowed him up quite early on and uh, ended up back down in sixth place. He just got his head down, kept on churning out the laps, made his way forward. Looking pretty good as we come in towards the two minute mark for Tony Gruber, running with him at the minute. So James, I'm gonna let you finish this one off. And call in the last okay, thank you, several Frank. laps. We're running into the final two minutes with Tony Gruber. He has had all of his stops. Nothing extra planned for him. He can see a little bit of traffic in front of him. But he can just post his way up towards it. He's got a couple of seconds in his pocket from Gil. Still around that two and a half second mark. Desperately unlucky for Dario Balestri. Uh, had, uh, was dominating the final. And Crosscamp and Gruber had got relatively close to him. Just over one minute left. Never completely over till they get right to the end, but Tony Gruber is looking in a very strong position at the moment. A couple of cars in front of him that he probably won't want to catch. Hopefully his uh, mechanic on the headset letting him know that uh, just got about a minute left. He made his way through the traffic. 40 seconds left. He's got five seconds now over Jules. Into the final 30 seconds. So probably this lap and two more. I think Tony Gruber might just make the extra lap. Maybe, possibly. That's always nice if you can do that, get a victory lap. Into the final 10 seconds. Five, four, no, I think this might be it. Tony Gruber is going to cross the line. Tony Gruber crosses the line to win the European Championship. 
for 2023. Your Grove Camp in second. Carmine Raiola in third. We have got uh, Diekman in fourth position. Alessio Matteo fifth. Well done, Alex Thurston. Sixth position. Spiniello eighth. Guyamo in... Uh, sorry, Spiniello was seventh. Guyamo was eighth. Francesco Caroni ninth. Uh, really unlucky for Dario Balestri. Uh, finishing in tenth position. And Stefanitzi. But there we go, Tony Groover. Subject to scrutineering is our European champion for 2023. Unbelievable. I have, I have no words. Um, after a flame out in the pit, after the engine stop, it was not a flame out, it was an engine stop. Um, but I know I have the pace. I see in the beginning I catch Dario and I have really the pace. So I just keep focus on my race and just drive my style. And in the end, with Dario, I don't know what's happened. He, he got out something. And also Chiles, I know he just uh, changed the right side. So also I, fin I think he finished the tires. But overall, I, I had the pace. I feel it in the beginning. The car was super stable. I feel, I feel really safe. And finally, after I don't know six, uh, six years, I did it again. <laughs> that, that, that first stint, the first couple of stints with you and Dario, you're driving so aggressive. Were you feeling that confident with the car that you could get past them? Sure. Uh, I was really confident with the car. I feel really safe. So also, it was not aggressive. It was just focus on my on my pa on my pace and don't touch it because of the stop and go. And to be fair, but I see already in the left corner on the straight. I had the traction, so I just wait when Dario makes some little mistake in the corner and then I pass him. Um, yeah, but with the with the stop of the car in the pit. But <laughs> well, I don't care now. I don't care now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you shouldn't. It was a fantastic race. Congratulations, a new European champion.